Episode 5 of The Hobby. Happy Cinco de Javio, as they say south of the border. I'm Dan Davis, and with me as always is James Fisher. How's it going? It's going great, and I'm excited about this week's show because we get to talk about one of my favorite things, the painting of the miniatures for the games. And the topic of painting is a huge one, and obviously, as always, we have this 10-minute uh, limit on uh, what we can do here on YouTube. So we've broken this one into two parts, although I'm thinking we might even go three parts. Um, part two is the part that everybody's been waiting for. It's going to be the uh, painting clinic on the Red Devils, the late war British paratroopers. Uh, it's going to include, uh, we'll talk about the box contents, uh, the colors used, the different techniques. All that stuff's going to be coming up in part two. And in a possible part three, we might even get into a little bit of how we uh, store, take care, and transport our miniatures. Yeah, I'd like to look at this episode as an open letter to painting. There you go. And with that, let's get into part one, which is just talking about painting. Just hanging out. Just two guys having a good time talking about painting. Um, so, you know, with that, let's get going. James, tell me, why paint? Why not paint? I mean, why get into these games if you don't plan on painting the miniatures? Uh, I guarantee the first thing that uh, caught my eye about any game that I've been into, whether it be Fantasy, Flames of War, Necromunda, any of these miniature games, was the idea of painting the miniatures. I painted miniatures for years and painted models for years before I ever got down on a tabletop and started playing games with them. Yeah, I gotta say that uh, I remember even going back to junior high when we were back in uh, you know the role playing days of playing spy games. I think uh, that's when I remember you painting your first miniature. Actually, I think that was when you converted your first miniature, wasn't it? Yeah, I found a, an old one seventy second scale uh, U.S. Army man, and uh, it happened to be a guy that held a pistol. So chopped his helmet off and gave him a different head and painted him up, and away he goes, Mister Secret Agent Man. Kind of looked like Don Johnson, didn't he? Oh. Yeah, well, it was the eighties. <laughs> so why do you paint? I mean, uh, when you kind of started playing these games and you got into painting the miniatures, uh, did you just know off the top of your head? I mean, I remember when I first, you know, came over and saw you painting these things, I thought, wow, you know, he's, he's doing a pretty good job with this. Did, did Is it just something you automatically knew how to do? Well, no, it kind of all started for me back in the 80s um, with my dad. Uh, he got me into painting miniatures. Um, he played a game called Micro Armor. Um, well, it actually wasn't the game system, but the scale of games uh, was called Micro Armor. And um, he had a bunch of little tanks, and I thought these little tanks were really great, so I started painting those with him. It gave us something to do together. I'd just like to interject here. For those of you interested in scale and Micro Armor, you might want to check out Episode 4, Part 1 and 2 of the Hobby, where we talk about scale. Good plug. Um, but uh, I was also into, like, 172nd scale guys, um, because you could buy boxes of those for a couple of bucks, and you get 50 guys to play, you know, army men with. And uh, my dad bought, brought me home some paints one day and um, said, well, why don't you start painting them up? So I did. And, of course, you know, not knowing what I know now, they were plastic and the paint would instantly scrape right off of them and everything. But it was still a lot of fun to do. And that, that basically kind of got me into doing models, um, like started off with the snap type models and then with the glue ones until, you know, I killed too many brain, brain cells sniffing glue and whatnot. <laughs> Um, right. And uh, I remember, I remember uh, when we were kids, you used to paint the uh, the one seventy second aircraft with those poly paints. Yeah, yeah, that was always kind of fun. Yeah, poly paints were a really good paint at the time because uh, they they had military colors. They were water cleanup. They weren't like the test. Oh, that's at the time. right. The first water based paints. Yeah, 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 they were they were they were really nice. Um, and basically went from went from there into uh, got into miniature games and kind of a circuitous route. Um, I was with a friend one day, and I, I was over at his house, and he had a bunch of uh, Space Hulk miniatures uh, from Games Workshop Space Hulk game, and um, they weren't painted, and he had a bunch of paints sitting around on his table, but nothing painted, so I sat down just to kill some time and started painting up one of his miniatures, and came over and looked at it and thought it looked really great, and, you know, I enjoyed painting it, so kind of took off from there. Um, basically moved on into, uh, you know, fantasy and 40K and Flames of War and other, you know, other various 28 millimeter miniature games. Um, and here recently I've kind of started getting back into micro armor uh, painting. 
Um, but uh, basically, that's how I got into painting. But um, what you know, what, what gets your painting weenie going crazy? <laughs> Well, I have to say my painting pants go crazy when I start looking at models that I like. Um, I, I talked a little bit uh, when we talked about scale about a thing I call painting uh, stamina. And uh, basically, I've got to, to be really interested in what I'm painting because I find it to be a really tedious thing. And although I have these really grandiose ideas in my head of what I want it to look like and how I want it to... Uh, you know, to, to be in the end, unfortunately, I do not have the stamina. I'm kind of like that guy that says, man, you know, I, I look at a, you know, a guy that's all buff and muscular, and I say, man, you know, I'd do anything to look like that guy, except for exercise and eat right. <laughs> right. And, and, you know, when I look in, like, White Dwarf, or I look at some of the uh, studio stuff on the Flames of War website, or even at your stuff, and I say, man, you know, one of these days, I'm going to, you know, spend four hours painting one model, and I'm going to really make it look good. And uh, unfortunately, that day never comes because I'm always scurrying to try to get stuff painted as fast as I can so I can paint with it. Yeah, but your your standards have have gotten way you know more over the years. I remember when we first started playing games. You know, our goal was before we started playing miniatures on the tabletop was to at least get them glued to their base and primed. And right. now, you know, you're to the point where you know you're worried if you got some fully painted miniatures on the board but you don't have the flock on them oh yes those darn fins i gotta get that new grass <laughs> yeah pronto well the thing is is that or snow yeah or snow when, when we first started playing the games um you know you want to get as much stuff as you can to play with and i mean i'm a numbers guy you know i love to play with large huge forces which is kind of why i've gravitated over to the 15 millimeter scale games and sucker and, and why we're looking at you know micro armor because we can play with more tanks um and then, like I say, that that's that's just to get that stuff on the table that fast. You you need to you know lower your standards. <laughs> you know you need to be able to say, yeah, let's play some light primer on those nights, and off we go. And unfortunately, you know you're playing with an army that you know you don't have all the pieces glued together because you don't want to glue them together until you've painted them because you know, you won't be able to reach this corner of this crevice. And eventually, that started beating me down. And uh, for some reason, when I when I when I got into Warhammer, for example, I uh, you know, I was always acquiring miniatures. I was, it was all about collecting. It was all about building numbers and having a force, you know, and, and occupying and owning. And uh, unfortunately, my, my thirst to, to own far, far exceeded my thirst to paint. And so that's what led to the boxes of white miniatures because, you know, I do have a strict rule of priming them all before I play with them. Um, but when I got into Flames of War, I, I told myself, okay, you know, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to buy what I'm going to buy to get started. You know, I started out with a box of T-34s. And I said, and I'm not going to buy anything else until I paint these T-34s. And then I bought my first box of army and I pa uh, infantry, and I painted that. And then, you know, so on and so on and so on. And I've, I've, I've only bought after I've completed painting. And so I can I can probably say that everything in my huge Soviet army is fully painted. And yeah, and, and that's that's a great thing. And this might be a little bit off topic, but definitely uh, one piece of advice I can give to anybody out there get, first getting into a game is, is is try and keep in mind the the scale of game you're getting into, meaning how many miniatures you you want to buy to get started, because some of these games you can get into, you know, you can reasonably get into for a dozen miniatures, get those guys painted up before and you're off and you're ready to go. Yeah. But some of these games you got to buy hundreds of miniatures, so, you know, try and break that down into manageable chunks mm -hmm. where you're only painting a dozen or so miniatures at a time. Um, and I, I think you'll find that you'll get through your army a lot quicker that way. You know, other than the fact that you could play a game in two hours or less, a, a huge attraction to the game of Blood Bowl that we used to play all the time, which for those of you that don't know, is a fantasy fantasy variation of of American football slash rugby. Right. Um, but 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 the attraction of that game, besides being able to play it so quick, was the fact that you you, you painted sixteen miniatures max. Yeah, that's um, all you ever needed. You can only yeah. have sixteen guys on a team, and that's all you ever needed. And once you got that team done, you were ready to rock and roll for you know an infinite number of games. Heck yeah! And and that was also really cool because only being able only having to paint sixteen models, um, you were able to chew through team after team faster. And, and you got more experience painting different things. You know, right. like I never painted Lizardmen until I did a Lizardmen Blood Bowl team. Keep watching our YouTube channel, Arball817, for part two of this painting clinic on the Red Devils. And also uh, look for extended versions of section one. There'll be two more parts covering some more basics of painting as well as some other fun uh, techniques. So thank you and stay tuned.